Okay, this is logic design. Uh, I think it's lecture 11. Um, and uh, it's for the, um, for the 23rd of uh, September. Uh, so I'm going to just continue on with uh, the uh, uh, K maps. Uh, we'll pick up uh, where we left off with three variable maps. Let me just quickly uh, pull up the syllabus. Let's see, I think, I think I can just shrink this down. Yeah, so, so here's the syllabus, uh, week five. Um, we're on September 23rd, K-maps with four variables and don't cares. That's right where we are. Uh, so remember that, uh, so uh, we, we definitely need to get the team members finalized. And I know that's been a problem. You know, usually we just do it after class and people mingle and, and hook up and, and get set up in their groups. But uh, it's hard to do that online. And so uh, so I guess what I'm going to have to do, uh, so send me an email uh, and let me know uh, if there, you know, uh, I, well, some of you have already sent emails. So I'll, I'll go back and pull all those emails and uh, I'll try and assign all those groups. But if you didn't send an email with your group and you don't have a group, then uh, then I'll, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna randomly hook up everybody who's not already sent me an email. So so this is your last chance to send an email with a group, and then if you don't have one, I'm just gonna randomly assign you. Um, okay. So uh, and then we will be doing. Uh, we've got a few weeks, but eventually we'll be doing uh, the group projects and. What I want to do for those, I, I'd like to have you do them um, on uh, live on Zoom. And uh, so we'll schedule that. And then any of the other classmates that want to tune in and listen not listen in, that would be great. Uh, but uh, it's not going to be as good as it normally would be in person. Uh, in person, I usually have uh, one of the communication professors uh, assign some of her students to uh, come to our class and actually um, listen to the presentations and then give feedback uh, live in the class. And so we're going to be missing that feature, and I think that's unfortunate. But uh, maybe I'll try and do that myself. In any event, well, that's what we'll do. Um, okay, so moving on, let's uh, let's jump on uh, the uh, pick up where we left off. And let's see, Let just do this and let's see, I'll see if we can do this, something like that. Okay, well, yeah, so the axis is labeled a funny way, we know that. Okay, all right, so, uh, and maybe I'll move this over just a little bit, so it's just a little bit over here, yeah, perfect, okay. Okay, so uh, here's a three variable map. We've already covered this and we talked about this already. And what you, what you saw was that uh, we can loop these two, we can loop this wraparound group of two, and this group of two at the bottom we don't need because it's a consensus term. So the, the, entire, the entire map is covered. This, is, this group here is A prime B. It's A prime because it's in the column where A is zero, so for both boxes, A is 0, and for both boxes, B is 1. But C is 1 here and 0 here. So C changes, so it's the term that's dropped. And here, we see A is 1 for both boxes, so that's going to be A, C prime. But you notice that in this box, C is 0, and over here, C is also 0. But A is 1, I'm uh, sorry, B is 1, and here B is 0. So B changes, so B drops. So we're left with AC prime. Now obviously this group right here would be another group of two, but we don't need that because we've already covered all the ones and that gives us a complete solution to our truth table. So our truth table can be implemented with two AND gates and one OR gate. An AND gate with A and B prime, uh, A prime and B going in and A and C prime going in the other AND gate and both of those feeding into one output OR gate. Now, um, the, uh, so this consensus term, 
we will add it in some situations where we're trying to deal with hazards, and we'll talk about that more, but not, not in today's lecture. Okay, so uh, there are several different uses for k-maps. We can plot out the min terms uh, and come up with a minimum solution. We can plot out product terms. Uh, we, can, we can have terms and plot all the terms and then see what the min terms are and reproduce the truth table. And in some cases, then, we can actually uh, simplify it from there more effectively than we could with switching algebra. All right. Um, so K-map and the consensus term. So here's the consensus theorem, as you remember. X prime Y plus X Z plus Y Z equals X prime Y plus X Z. So the, con the term you don't need here is the Y Z term. You have an x prime and an x and a y and a z. It's that y z term that's the consensus term. And if we go back to this one, you see we have an a prime b and an a c prime. So the b c prime term, which is down here, b c prime, because a changes, that b c prime term is the consensus term. All right. Now, the k maps make it easy to see these terms. Uh, the consensus terms are never required for a solution because all the ones are already covered. Uh, so here is another example. This is a four-variable k-map. Now let me just point out a couple of things on this four-variable k-map. First off, you notice down the side, just like before, we, we numbered it 0, 1, 3, 2. In the columns, now we have A and B across the top and C and D down the side. And we number the columns 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 2. So we flipped. These two, row, these two columns get flipped. The right two columns and the bottom two rows. And that's what you have to remember. Now we have a term here. A prime, B prime, C prime. And a term here. A prime, B, D. But there is another term here, this green loop, and that's the consensus term. And note, it's so we have uh, so the b, the b prime and the b. So so the consensus term would be a prime, c prime, d. And uh, there it is, a prime, c prime, d. And you can see that the green term is not required because there are four ones on this map. They're all covered with the first two terms, a prime, b prime, c prime, and a prime, b, d. Now notice, on a four variable map, when you combine two boxes, you have a three variable term. Notice on a, on a uh, three variable map, when you combine two boxes, you have a two variable term. So, so you have to remember how many variables results from combining the boxes uh, it's one less, so each box on a three variable map represents three variables. When you combine two, you drop one variable, so you're left with two. Each box on a four variable map includes four variables. When you combine two, you drop one, so now you have three variables. If you combined four boxes, you would drop two variables, or one more variable, so that you would have a two variable term. And if you combined eight boxes, you'd have a single variable term on a four variable map. And again, if you combined all boxes, then you would have the constant 1, if they were all 1s. Or if they're all zeros, you could combine them as a max term, and you, could have, and you would have the constant 0. All right. So now we're going to talk about prime implicants. This is just a definition, but it is kind of, it's sort of an important definition uh, for, uh, for understanding how these simplification theorems work and whatnot. So, so any any time we have uh, a a a min term or two min terms combined together uh, or whatever any any of those are implicants, but it's only prime if it cannot be combined with another implicant. So for instance, in this map we have this box here which represents a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime, and this box here which represents a prime, b prime. C prime, D. Those are both implicants. They're not prime because they, those two can be combined together with each other to form a two-variable term, a, 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 
three variable term, a prime, b prime, c prime, where the d drops out. And because that a prime, b prime, c prime term cannot be combined with another group of two to make a group of four, it is considered prime. Just like this term here is also a prime implicate. It's a prime BD. And interestingly, the consensus term, the a prime C prime D term, is also prime because it cannot be combined with another group of two to make a group of four. Yet it includes uh, other, other terms from prime implicants. It includes the one from this prime implicate, and it includes the one from this prime implicate. So it turns out it's not essential, it's not neat, it's not required, whereas this one is essential. And so is this one, because this one right here is only covered by this one prime implicate, and this one is only covered by this prime implicate. But these ones are covered by other, are covered by more than one prime implicate, both of them ones. So this green term is not, is not needed or not essential. All right. So, so an implicant is, that cannot, cannot be combined is considered a prime implicant. It, if, it, if it includes min terms that are not covered in any other prime implicant, it's considered essential. And your minimum SOP expression contains all of the essentials and then some pot potentially of the non-essentials. But it must include all the min terms. All the ones must be covered. All right, so let's look at this map. Now, here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 ones. And uh, <clears throat> so one of the questions is, how many prime implicants are in this, in this K-map? Well, so one of the things that pops right out is this group of four here. So you would circle this group of four here. Uh, I don't know how the, the order is. Well, so you can see we have a group of two here. But this group of two can be combined with another group of two to make a group of four. Because you also have this group of two, this one wrapped around with this one, can be combined with these two ones to make one big group of four. Then we have these two ones and those two ones. So these two ones can be combined with these two ones to make a group of four. And same with these two. These two ones can be combined with these two ones to make a group of four. So, so, so these two blue groups are prime implicants, but all those groups of two in here are not. Now, there's still one more prime implicant. Well, there's two more, uh, actually three more, but uh, we'll get to those, actually four more. We'll get to those in a second. So there's this group of four. Now, this is this is this group of four essential? No, it is not. It's an, it's a, it is, a consensus term. And it is not essential because all the ones can be covered by this group of four and this group of four. Now, how many more prime implicants do you think there are? These all three are prime implicants, but the, the group of uh, the, the column here uh, of four is not essential. But notice we can group these two together and they can't be combined with any other group of two to make a group of four. So that's, a, that's another prime implicant. We can group this group together. That's another prime implicant. And we have a wraparound group with this one and that one, which is also another prime implicant. So there's three more prime implicants. That one, that one, and that one. And so all totaled on this chart, we have six prime implicants. But we don't need all six for our solution. All we need are the essentials plus a few non-essentials. Now, uh, the essentials are the two big groups of four, you know, the, the square root groups of four, but not the column. But then we have two min terms that were not covered. Now, we could cover them with this group of two and this red and this wraparound group of two. But, but that would take two additional prime implicants. It's much better to just cover them with this single group of two. And that gives you the minimum solution. So the minimum solution, let's see, I think I implemented it, is this, where we have one group of two and two groups of four. And we don't include any of the essential terms 
are any of the non-essential terms and any of the uh, any of the, the consensus terms. And um, yeah, so this is a good solution. Now, if we had hazards, then we might we might need to add some of those other terms in. All right. So does everybody see how this works? We have uh, we started with six prime implicants. Two of them are essential, and the rest are not. So four are non-essential. But of the non-essentials, this one makes the best uh, minimum solution. So that's what we picked. So our final solution has two essentials and one non-essential. And and there are all the uh, and there are all the uh, consensus terms and the non-essentials, the other non-essentials that we didn't pick. All right, let's look at this one. Um, so you can see right off the bat we have this group of four over here, and then uh, then what else? Well, so you can see a group of two, a group of two, a wraparound group of two, and another wraparound group of two. So. Group of two, group of two, wraparound group of two, and another wraparound group of two. So we have one, two, three, four, five prime implicants on this chart. Uh, now, the ones that have terms in them that are not covered by any other prime implicant are essential. So this group of four is essential. This blue group of two is essential because it's the only one covering this one. And this group of two is essential because it's the only one covering this one. But this one is covered by two different non-essentials, so you just have to pick one. And in this case, your final solution would be the three blue terms plus one of the red terms. Either one would, make, would give you an equivalent solution. Uh, so there are two minimum solutions here that are not identical. All right. Um, so K maps with more than four variables. This is where uh, the joy of the K map breaks down a little bit, um, because uh, yes, you can do uh, theoretically five and six variable maps, but unless you have uh, the uh, the the Star Wars three dimensional chessboard. Uh, it's really hard to visualize this. So, um, since you can only have a max of two variables on any one axis, you have to go to the third dimension for five and six variables. And uh, so they, we just use the imaginary axis into the plane of the 2D map. And, uh, and there's a couple different ways to do this. I'll, I'll show you the best way. So one way to do a five variable map is to cut each square in half and call that the E variable, whereas one's in the upper half and zero's in the bottom half. That that is that is not uh, that is not easy to make sense out of, and I, I don't think this is a good solution. So what what we normally recommend is that you do two different four variable maps, one map that where E is considered to be zero, and the other map where E is considered to be one. And that that works a whole lot better and then you don't have to use these diagonals. You're kind of visualizing it like this, but, but if you do two maps, you can just think of it as you take off the front, the front course and make that a separate map, and then you do the back course, and that's a separate four-variable map. And you just have to stack them to get the effect. And then a six-variable map, some have suggested doing this. This is really terrible. I don't know how you can even begin to make sense out of this. Uh, so for a six variable map, I, I recommend you just do six, uh, six four variable maps and you label one EF00, one EF01, one EF11, and one EF10 and try and make that work. But even that's kind of challenging. Six variables is not very easy. Five is definitely doable. Six is hard, maybe impossible. All right, so uh, we talked about those already. Uh, you can read off the minimum and max terms. You can prove two functions are equal. You can even and and or two functions together. And it certainly, well, it's certainly a, an easy way 
to go from a SOP form to a POS form because all you have to do is, is uh, if you have an, S, have it an SOP form, you just plot all the terms, all the ones, and then you uh, take the zeros and, do, and come up with a minimum solution for the zeros. Or if you're going the other way, you plot the zeros and then you, uh, then you uh, use the ones to generate uh, the minimum function with the ones. So from a KMAP, you can definitely read both the max terms and the min terms. Uh, one other thing to point out here are the other labels. So uh, this is the way I, that I recommend you label it. So we have AB on the top, CD on the side. So we know that these two columns represent A equals 1, and these two columns represent A equals 0. We also know that the middle two columns represent B as 1, whereas the outside two columns would be B as 0. The, the bottom two rows are C as 1, whereas the top two rows are C as 0, or C prime. And then the middle two rows are D, and the top and bottom rows are D prime. And so with a little practice, you can read these things off pretty well. Um, okay, so that pretty much, uh, that pretty much covers... Uh, 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 that pretty much covers the slides. What I want to do now, let me switch to. Uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna expand this, and then I'll switch to the to paper, and we'll just do a few uh, additionals. Okay. Okay. So. Um, So, so one of the things with KMAPs that's very helpful uh, uh, is that they, they really are visual. And you're, once you get used to looking at them, your eyes can definitely uh, achieve these minimum solutions. So let's take an example like this. This, this is one of the ones, I'll, I'll, I'll do some where they, they can be kind of confusing. I didn't make all these squares exactly the same. So one example is, what if you have ones in all four corners? Well, so basically you can combine all four corners together in one big group of four. And if you label the axes A, B up here, and C, D down the side, then this four corners is, uh, is B prime, D prime. That's just good to kind of remember that. Another one that's real tricky same AB at the top, and we will always label AB at the top and CD down the side. Uh, just so you can kind of get used to it. Now remember, these two columns are A, these two columns are B, these two columns are C, and I'm oh, sorry, two rows are C, and these two rows are D. So that really helps you read things off. Now, if we put in, if we put in, if we have some ones like this, and um, this is one that students will often mess up. So everybody sees this group of four. And sometimes people will also see this group of four wrapped around. But then they'll do this group of two, and then they'll wrap around this group of two. But that's wrong. What they should see is that this is another group of four here, and this is a wraparound group of four here. So let me draw it off by itself so you can see um, what it should look like. So we have, say, three ones here and, say, three ones there. So you have a group of four here. You have a wraparound group of four. And you have a group of four here, and you have a wraparound group of four here. 
that's what you should see. So one, two, three, four, four groups of four. There are no groups of two because every group of two can, can be combined with another group of two to make a group of four. All right, um, those are the probably the trickiest ones. Um, let's just take another one. So we have A, B, C, D. So let's let's put some ones. something like that. All right, so what do we have? Well, so we can combine this one with this one for a group of two. We have a group of four here, and we have another group of four here, and then we have a group of two here. So what would the minimum solution be? Well, it turns out you need, you need all of these. So let's write that. So let's see. So first off, what's this group of two what would that be? Well, we know that uh, this is, well, so if we use the alternate labels, let's do the alternate labels. So we know this is A. We know this is the, the middle, these two are A. We know these two are B. We know these two are C. We know these two are D. So these have to be, these have to be uh, A prime, B prime, because we're over here in the A prime. So A prime, B prime. So C is one here, but it's zero there. So it looks like the C is gonna drop. And D is D prime here and D prime there. So that, that group of two then is gonna be A prime, B prime, D prime. Now, what about this group of uh, two up here? This one. So that's gonna be A, B, and looks like a b c prime because d is one there and zero there so the d will drop so it's going to be so this group of two is going to be a b let's see i guess you couldn't quite see that one so this group of this wraparound group here is going to be a prime b prime d prime this group here is going to be a b and since the d drops we're left with c but that up here is c that's C prime up here, so that's going to be A, B, C prime. Now, what's this? what about this group of four here? What's that group going to be, this group right here? Well, it's clearly B, so the A is going to drop, because uh, A is 1 on this half and 0 here. And C is 1 here and 0 there, so it's going to drop. So we have to drop two variables because it's a group of four. And so it looks like it's going to be B, D. So that will just be B, D. And what about this group? Well, that's going to be A, D, A, D, because these two columns are A and these two rows are B, D. And you know you're going to drop the other two variables because you have to drop two. So A, D. So this map would be A prime, B prime, D prime, plus A, B, C prime, plus A, D, plus B, D. And this is a minimum solution. You can't, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't shrink this down. Now you can reconfigure it. You could put it in SOP form, or rather POS form. Let's put it in POS form. So in POS form, we'll, we'll, we'll put in the zeros. Wherever we don't have a one, we have zeros. But it gets kind of crowded. So I usually just draw a brand new map. And so let's just draw a brand new map down here. And we'll put the zeros in where they go. So we have a zero here and there. We have two zeros here. And we have three zeros here. And that was it. All right, so what do we have? Well, it's a little messy, but so obviously we can group these two zeros. And then we can do we can do a group here, a group here, a wraparound group with this one, and a wraparound group with that one. So it looks like we don't need all these. So we need this one, 
We need this one, this one, this, this wraparound, this wraparound, and then we need either this group of two down here or this group of two down there. So we, we have two equivalent solutions. So let's look at those. So first off, how do, we, how do we call these? And again, we'll do the same thing, A, B, C, D. And the first two rows, these right two columns are A, the middle two columns are B, the bottom two rows are C, and the top and the, the middle two, the, the bottom two rows are C, and the middle two rows are D, okay? Um, so let's do that. So, um, so let's do this one first. So the way I do it is I pretend they're ones, and I write down what the term would be if they were ones, and then I just invert the term, and that, that keeps me out of trouble all the time. Uh, so if these were ones, that would be a prime, b prime, d. So if these were ones, it would be a prime, b prime, d, but they're not ones, they're zeros, so we have to invert this. So we invert this, and what we get then is a plus b plus d d prime. So that's 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 the max term. Now, and, well, it's a it's a com combination because it's only three variables, not four. And then this wrap around. So if we had ones here, that would be uh, that would be uh, a prime b uh, d prime. A prime b d prime, which then inverted would be a plus b prime plus d. So that's that one, the wraparound. And then this wraparound is, uh, would be, they were both ones, would be uh, A, B prime, uh, D prime. And so when we invert that, we would get A prime plus B plus D. And then the, then we have two choices down here, this group of two and this group of two. Let's do both of those. We only need one of them though. So this group of two would be uh, would be B uh, C uh, D prime B C D prime which would result in if you invert that would result in uh, B prime plus C prime plus D and this one would be A C d prime, which if you invert that would be uh, a prime plus c prime plus d. So our final solution then is going to be uh, a plus b plus d prime. So let me write it up here. a plus b plus d prime times, uh, let's see, times uh, a times a prime plus b plus d times let's see we need this one uh, this this wraparound group of two which is right here and that is a plus b prime plus d and finally then we need one of these other two and so that would be plus either this term or this term. If we use this term, that's one solution. If we use this term, that's the other equivalent solution, but non-identical. Not plus either, they're multiplied. All right, so let's, uh, I think we'll stop with that. Uh, so uh, the video is a little bit shorter. So let me just talk about the test briefly, and then I, I will put up a video uh, when everybody completes the test. Um, so the so the test uh, let's see let me switch this back so the, the average on the test was 70.2 um, which was about kind of what I thought it would be close to 70 uh, I think it's a little harder to do these tests online uh, there was one person that got a hundred. So, uh, kudos to them. Uh, that was that was well done. Um, there were some low scores. I will send out uh, I will send out uh, some uh, an email to uh, to pretty much everybody that scored below seventy, 
and I'll give them a chance to do some work and uh, earn some points back. Now, the reason I do that, uh, there's a lot of reasons, but um, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I, I definitely won't penalize anybody. Um, so if you if you got 70 or above, uh, then uh, then you're really in pretty good shape. Um, and uh, I'm also, I'll probably add three points to uh, at least uh, three points or maybe even uh, a few more to everybody's score. We'll see. Uh, because there were two problems that, that had issues. And uh, so I'll go back and look at those. I haven't done that yet. and uh, But I'll, I'll try and add some points to, to uh, folks' scores. Uh, so when I do that, the average will be more like 76. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you're... Okay, so... Uh, so be sure and send me your email if you have uh, if you if there are some people you want in your group. If you've already sent me one, I should be, I should be able to I, I I have all those emails and I'll go back and pull those out. Uh, uh, hopefully, though, if uh, somebody was supposed to send one and didn't, uh, then that might be a problem. But hopefully, uh, that's all fine. All right, so we'll uh, we'll see you uh, in a lecture on Friday, um, and uh, otherwise we'll. See you later.